So I want to show you how you can um, start feathering light. So you don't have to always take a light and blast somebody <laughs> like that. Like, hey, wake up. Good morning. You can, you can take this light and start feathering just a bit. And so from this direction, we can see that we have a quality of light that is, is very, very nice. And we'll raise this up. Just get a little bit of light on her face. And then we can start doing things like using a, a light modifier here to fill in some shadows over there. And so instead of getting this really horribly hard light, in fact, let's do this really fast, John. Let's shoot this photo. Um, yep, it's all set and ready to go. So let's, let's shoot this really also? fast. I just want that white reflector yeah. there. And I'm going to shoot this in aperture priority mode. And I'm shooting it at, is the tethered capture started, do you know? Yeah, I'll, I believe it is. I'll just double check. Okay. Yep. yep. It's and all good ISO 100 good right now. Cool. So I'm going to bump this guy up to, because we're shooting with constant light. Again, we're shooting constant light because we want to just worry about the light, not the flash and all that kind of stuff. So I'm shooting in aperture priority mode at ISO 800. And I'm using a 24 to 70 lens, which is not usually the lens that I use. But I'm doing that because we're working in a tight space. So John, what we'll have you do, mm -hmm. is we're going to have you come around to the right side, camera right of Lex there. And then I want you to put that um, reflector up right about there. Okay. Do you want to do with both with and without? Or? Yeah, we'll do it without yeah. first. And then Lex is going to look right at me. Yes, that's what I want. Perfect. Got that. And actually, you know what? I had something wacky going on here. A flesh. Wait yeah, balance. OK. Here we go. And my exposure compensation set mm -hmm. from yesterday. Okay. And so we'll do that. And I hadn't set my white balance either, so we'll set that. So we have this sort of moody look right here. There we go. So we have this light that I like quite a bit. The other thing with this, what we can do is we can take this and convert it to black and white and get that look that we talked about yesterday. So let me convert this to black and white really quickly. Bam. So now we have that sort of black and white portrait -y look by feathering the light. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the reflector really quickly. And we're going to get a totally different look from this same setup. So let's add that reflector really quickly and bring it just this way a hair. All right, and I'm seeing a, a problem with this, but we'll shoot and I'll show everybody the problem. Perfect. Perfect. OK, great. So let me show you this, and then I'll show you the, the issue that we have with this shot. Because we definitely have, OK, the issue with this shot right now is this shadow right here. See that? That shadow is breaking a rule. And the rule is, normally, and Lex, I'm going to have you come over here so I can show this on your face. There's this little line. And give me a, like a smi slight smile. Yeah, see this, this smile line right here? We want to keep that shadow below that line. We want to keep it sort of right here in this area right here. When it starts to get up on the cheek, it looks unnatural. So we'll have you go back. So the, the way to fix that, does anybody want to make a guess on how we fix it? Yes, yeah, so easy. <laughs> we move our light up. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to take this, and I am going to move my light up if it works. I'll do this, move my light up. Maybe get it about right there. And notice how we're still feathering the light. Yes, what's your question? Is there a rule on how far you let the... I mean, so you've changed the angle this way. Is there a rule yep. this way? There is, and we're going to do that after we look at modifiers. Okay, sorry. We're going to talk about all the different closed and open loop rules. Yeah, so now we've, we've actually closed this loop right here, and we'll talk about that. And so let's put that reflector, reflector up again, very nice and close. Yeah, and so we're getting, let's get this back just a hair. I'm moving. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the different, because we're, what we're getting is, yeah, hold that right there. This shadow is just really hard. I don't like that. And so for this, even this, this reflector, what I would do at this point, just looking at this, and I don't know if you can zoom in and see that. Am I in the way? So the, the issue with this light is this shadow right here. And John, take that yeah. down. So when it's hard light, that shadow looks appropriate. As soon as we soften that light, so throw that reflector back up, now it's distracting, and I don't like it. And so if I was shooting this setup, um, which I am right now, and, <laughs> and we, we put that reflector up there, and I saw that shadow, what I would do immediately is go, nope, that's not the modifier I want to use. 
It's just not right because we're just getting something that's not flattering. And so I would abandon ship at that point with this modifier because it's not giving me what I want. It's giving me something that's, I'm trying to force my photo to work with the light modifier I chose instead of choosing the light modifier that works with the look that I'm trying to accomplish. Does that make sense? Yes. So since Brennan doesn't change hard or soft, it just changed directions. Yes. In fact, let's try, I'm sorry, let's try a couple things here. What we're going to do, we are going to, so Lex, let's have you come forward a little bit. Um, just like that. And we're going to roll this guy back just a hair so we have side light. So what we're going to have here, this magnum reflector, I'm trying to make this enough side light where we can try to control this. Okay, I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer. All right, so I'm going to take a photo. Now what we're noticing, and John, you can, you can hop out if you'd like. Um, we're just going to have modifiers everywhere, just a row of modifiers. So what we have here is we have... Uh, Lex, and then we also have light on the background. All right, so I will take a photo of that, just so we have it. Do, do, do. And um, I'm also going to set my white balance really quickly from auto white balance to tungsten. Okay, so let me just shoot this photo of Lex. And we have this very moody shot that I think is awesome. It's going to be coming up here. It's pretty cool. All right, so that is very contrasty light, but we have a lot of light spilling on the background. Also notice this, this is a technique that is, um, is very simple to use. So if you wanna have, notice how we have that vignette on the background, so it's not a totally dark background, it has a little light, and the way we're doing that is this light is spilling onto the background. And so we're getting actually uh, double duty out of this light. And so by, by feathering the light like that, we actually are able to light a background and a subject, and because not as much light is on the background, it's a little darker, and so it's sort of a natural vignette look, which I love to do. Okay, so, um, oh, this, we can't put a grid on this because we don't have grids. Sorry, we're gonna have to use something that has a grid. Let's do the seven inch. Okay. We also can compare the, uh, how hard this light is with this uh, seven inch guy right here. Bam, yep, sorry. Um, so I will put this about right there. And now notice this is a much smaller light source. And we're going to compare the shadows that we have here. So what I'll do is I'll pull this way back. And you're going to see a huge difference. So all we did was we put a smaller light source and we, we zoomed it way back so it's the widest possible source that we can get. And I'll see if I can match that shot. OK. And look at the difference between that magnum reflector that was feathered and this little guy here that was not feathered. It's a huge difference, right? Um, now watch, let's keep going. Let's take this light source and we're gonna zoom it in. By the way, th this is a Profoto specific thing that I'm doing, we're zooming the lights in and out. So um, I'm doing it because I can, because we have the, the good stuff here. All right, so we're gonna do the same shot here but now with that zoomed in, good. Watch the background, that's what we're looking at. So shadows on Lex's face will remain similar, but now it's, it's more contrasty. So look at the difference in the first shot and the second shot that we created here. And you'll see that the second shot, the shadows are very, very similar to the first shot, but we're changing how that background looks by zooming light in and out. Which is, which is really cool. But, oh, we're gonna go one step more. Yeah, so let's size? do a, is a 10? let's try a 20. Okay, that's a 10. Okay, this is a 10 and there's a 20 there. Okay, so 10 and 20, these are 20 degrees, 10 degrees. And so um, I don't know, what I'm trying to do is to get the light off the background without totally eliminating the light on Lex's face. So I'm not sure if that's 10 degrees or 20 degrees or five degrees. And so I'm just gonna sort of look and see. So I think a 10 degree grid is gonna get us where we wanna go. And we might even need a five degree. So I'll throw that in here. And by the way, these grids, putting grids on lights, that is not a Profoto specific thing. There's all kinds of lights with, with grids. Okay, now we've really restricted the light with a 10 degree grid. And we're gonna look straight into the camera. Beautiful. Clickety click. And you're gonna see something amazing here and you'll, I want you to tell me why this is happening. Um, it's a little quiz. Okay, why is the background blue? Does anybody know? 
yeah, the video lights that are on our hosts are actually lighting up the background. And so we're seeing light from a different light source that has a totally different color temperature. And because we have lights in the studio on, they're actually influencing that background. And that's why it turned blue. So if we turned off all the video lights that are here, then that would go away. So it, we're actually picking up ambient light back there. Pretty crazy, huh? So yes. Are you shooting in, in uh, aperture priority? Yes. OK, thank you. Yeah. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not get confused with all the camera modes and stuff. I'm just shooting easy schmeasy aperture priority mode. I just noticed you weren't, didn't see me were adjusting any exposure, but she nope. has quite yeah, a bit she's less. Yeah, she's staying consistent. Yeah, OK. Yes, aperture priority mode. I'm letting the camera handle it, because that's what cameras do. But uh, yeah, that blue background is the color temperature of the ambient light, which seems really low in here. But because we're shooting at a higher ISO, we're getting, uh, and I don't know if you guys can show these lights over here on our hosts. What, what but, lights do you want on right now? Are you? No, this with, is fine. Okay. Okay, great. This is a perfect example okay. of what's happening. But yeah, we have lights on over our, our hosts here, and that light is actually influencing this image. And that's something to be aware of. So how would we fix that? Strobe. Yes, <laughs> we would use a strobe. Because uh, the only other way to, to fix that is we need to, well, we'll get there. We need to increase our shutter speed to eliminate all the ambient light. And as soon as we do that, then we're going to get rid of all this light as well. And we're going to have problems. So that's why we, we need speed lights and we need strobes is to do exactly this thing. So we're gonna, in the next segment, we're going to explain how all that stuff works. But for now, we're seeing two different colors of light, the light from our chat hosts and the light from this. And it's pretty cool. But once you know this trick, you can do this. You can have like a low, you know, low wattage light that just has a different color temperature. And look at there. Now we have a blue background. It looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. It looks great. OK, um, we're going to keep going and uh, talk about different light modifiers. But notice this is all very, very hard light. But hard light, by the way, is not bad light. So that's something that is a, a, a misnomer in photography, that you have good light and bad light. That's, that's not the case. I think some of that comes from people calling it quality of light. And so many people think good and bad is quality. Yes. The quality here is hard versus soft, not good exactly. versus bad. There's not a good and bad light. There, yes. There's hard light that's great for uh, black and white portraiture or showing uh, shape and form and that kind of stuff. And soft light that's better for certain types of portraits, baby photography sometimes. Um, and so it's just different styles of light. So it's not good and bad light. Get that out of your head. If you've heard that, um, get rid of it. It's just different types of light. 